Hello guys, my name is Eric Stigio and today I want to show you how I did this illustration of a demon for a sorcerer and bringer game and what was the process behind it. So, basically the game that I was doing this illustration for is a sorcerer and bringer, as I said, it has extremely cool art inside of it, so if you have a time, just go and check it because I think it was an amazing opportunity to work on something like this and also it seemed like a fun game. I have never played it but I heard only like a good opinions about it so I guess it will be worth of like checking out. But going back to the illustrations I wanted to discuss with you some process that I took for all the illustrations I have made for them. Currently it's around 17 illustrations I guess but for only 4 or 5 I guess I have some sort of a process video like I recorded the progress but the process for every single image was pretty much exactly the same so I guess it's not that big of a deal that I only recorded like four of them you will get the general idea how I approach the, the whole project uh, just based on the on these three or four videos so in here uh, what I did at first was to create as much sketches as possible so for 10 illustrations in this case I made around 30 sketches or something like this, I guess it was around 30, maybe it was some more but I did not present it and later after choosing a sketch I pretty much modeled it like freely in 3D, like it was like a really basic sculpt in 3D code so it will give me a general idea what I want in terms of like a really subtle changes of the of the shot and how the light will pretty much work on the whole on the whole figure, on the whole body. I could paint it from the scratch, but in this case I thought it might be cool to try something new and I decided I will just go with a really simple sculpt and later I will try to draw, uh, like draw, f draw uh, all over it so all the foreshortening and pretty much everything will be more or less correct. So this way I will be able to eliminate like a lot of mistakes and a lot of perspective issues just by creating like this really simple sculpt. I guess in different video with the with also the demons I will also have like a short recording of how I modeled and posed this guy uh, because it was like nothing extremely complex but maybe you will want to know how, how it came to be and after doing like this stuff as I said uh, I tried doing an overdrawing all over it so I would not have to worry about all the perspective and everything. I only had to figure out some muscles. It was kind of challenging, but I'm not that good in terms of anatomy. So I guess that's the thing I really need to like pump up in terms of my skills and my abilities. So as you can see, it, it's nothing extremely complex and it was extremely fun to do. And after having like a solid line art, or like a really basic line art, I decided to make three different variations for the lightning. So in this case, I pretty much just took the, the line art, drew, painted under it. And if I will need to create like a new version, then I will be able to still like change the lights in the 3D. And, the, and after the client chose the light setup, I pretty much did three color versions. So there will be like something to choose from. So in this case, we can say it was like free sketches, uh, line art, simple model for the shot, and just free light sketches and free color sketches. So this way you can go like all the way down and choose what's best for the shot or what I think will work best for this shot anyway. So yeah nothing extremely complex and this is pretty much the whole process that the illustration went through and so it's like just a sketch just a line art a simple light and shadow color base and then i finish the whole illustration and the process for the whole illustration on the right side i will show you like in the 30 seconds and something like this so so yeah i think it, it's cool i i enjoyed painting it a lot so Maybe you will also learn something new from from the whole process. Uh, I have no idea. I have recorded this video pretty long time ago, so I have no like recollection. I don't remember 
where I did some splits because I am making a new voiceover with the with the video cam so you will be able to see me how I talk maybe it will help you understand something or, or anything but going to the process the first thing that I had to do was like the most boring thing because I had to block out the, the whole shapes and to pretty much separate every single object that I have in the illustration it's extremely boring and it's extremely tedious in case of this type of work I really prefer to do it when I when I'm like finishing the a lot of concepts so for example I have like 10 concepts and now I need to block them so after all the thinking and everything I pretty much then sit and just with my brain turned off I try to block out the shapes because it's extremely like boring and tedious job and in here after blocking everything I pretty much pasted my 3D model on top of the of the blocked shape because of the blocked shape because it has like the really basic lightning and it will allow me to way quicker understand what are the forms in the space and yeah it, it's pretty much it like it's a really nice trick and after everything when I have the lighting I can pretty much paint all over it I still have my line art, line art on top of everything so I will know what is where pretty much but later with the progression of the illustration I will like remove the line art from certain part from certain parts so I will be able to see the details a bit better so in this case as you can see it's nothing like extremely crazy there is like a lot of basic things combined together and the reason I like to use 3d in illustrations like for example the 3d code for the really basic setup is because it allows me to save a lot of time because of course I will be able to like paint this guy from the scratch but there are a lot of subtle things in terms of lightning that I might not be able to catch or maybe I will catch improperly or improperly I don't know the word uh, so using 3d like really helps especially with the fingers and the hands and everything and also in here you can see I downloaded some references from the web for the anatomy so I guess it's a good thing that more or less I know some bodybuilders from the name like I know who to search for and for this guy I really wanted to make him like he's like really solid really packed like ripped but kind of bloated out so it will kind of fit the idea of him breathing fire and everything and in bodybuilding for many years there was this problem of this bubble gut so it was pretty much like the, the belly was sticking out and it was like extremely huge so I felt it was like pretty interesting to include in the illustration and I felt it was working pretty well and also because like a lot of bodybuilding shows has have like a really cool lightning like you can see a lot of definition in the muscles it really helps in terms of like understanding the form and understanding what is the geometry of the object that I want to paint because for example the pecs or the abdominal muscles or the biceps or anything it's pretty much all geometry you just need to be aware of the shape of it in the space and how to light it properly from from the side from the bottom or anything so for example on the right side when you have these two huge chesticles you can pretty much imagine how the light will for example work for the bottom part of the pack or yeah pretty much anything uh, and for the mouth I also thought like using some sort of a turtle mouth will be quite cool because turtles have extremely weird ass like mouths like I have no idea way why all the spikes are in there probably for some digestion digestive things or to separate certain parts of the of the whatever they eat but it looks pretty creepy and I felt like for the demon to have like a creepy mouth it's pretty much self-explanatory I guess it's pretty easy to understand why I wanted to make him look a little bit creepy uh, also for this type of stuff it's kind of hard especially for the faces to make them look like a little bit more dangerous angry or screaming and to not make look them kind of goofy because all this like huge open jaws and the small like glowy eyes 
uh, have a really like high tendency of looking just goofy. And in terms of demons, there was one illustration where I had so many problems with the face, I had to spend like three or four days just on the face, like reworking it, making a break, reworking it, making a break, but I have a video of it, so later I will pretty much probably link it in here, or you will just see how it came to be. And in this case, for the process, it's pretty much all. Like, as I said in previous videos, I really like to have all my illustrations on in the single file, so this way I will be able to like constantly see what I'm basing on. And it was a lot of refining. For the brushes it was nothing like really fancy. I guess in this project I pretty much have done most of the rendering with like really basic brushes. Like I can remember I was using a lot of uh, like a basic circle but for the some textures I wanted to wrap them like around the form so for example if you have an arm so I will paint instead of like painting this direction I will try to paint around the form so it will make it look a little bit more like there will be a little easier to read the volume and to read the geometry of, of everything and also for the hands as you can see I just took a photo of my hand holding some sort of a stick uh, it's not a stick, it's like this weird axe that with a really pointy thing on the end. I have no idea how it's called in English language. In Polish it's called nadziak, so it basically stabs things. Uh, I guess, yeah. So it's also like a really cool trick if you have problems with hands. Just remember you have like the best pretty much model like on your left and on your right if you have two, two arms and two hands. And you can always like just take something and take a photo with it and you pretty much have all the problems resolved in terms of like making an illustration because hands are pretty hard like to master like to get the basic shape of the hand it's quite easy because it's just a box with some cylinders coming out of it but there are like a lot of really subtle things like all the creases in the hand and how the skin falls or how it pinches together and what happens when you squeeze something, all the like tendons, tendons and, and veins and everything. Like there's a lot of to take care of. And also for the hands, it's the second most important thing people tend to look at. So as I heard, like the face obviously is the first thing that we like look in terms of a human, or at least at what we should look at. And the hands are as far as I know the second most important thing so it's really a good idea to focus a little bit more on these two aspects in the illustration if it's possible because like for the faces maybe for the demons if you like mess something up so for example if i will like give him one eye a little bit higher it would not matter that much but for example if i will paint a, a woman or a man or any type of portrait if there will be like everything will be in different places it will be pretty pretty visible that something is really messed up and it pretty much will look kind of goofy once again and in this case I wanted to avoid making anything looking goofy so so yeah basically the rest of the process is just painting and later I guess I will use some sort of a uh, school sketcher I guess for the schools he has on the on the sides but I guess I will discuss it about it when when it will show properly when it will be shown in the video so I pretty much run out of the things to talk about in this illustration so I guess I could say what I wanted to achieve with this guy like to give you a little bit of a backstory for the illustration because from the start it was like one of my most favorite uh, sketches I have done for the project and I really like the idea of like a really hulking strong demon with all these bloated parts of his belly in, in the end he's not so bloated as I wanted him to because of lack of skills of painting but I guess I still managed to make him look a little bit more bloaty and I kind of wanted to make him look like a really basic in a sense enemy so for example if you will go to for example hell 
and you will have to find uh, fight a bunch of demons i guess he will be like one of the more basic minions but he will be one of the more dangerous basic minions so it will not be like the fallen one from example in diablo 2 or it will be a little bit more like a wendigo like it's still not that hard but it's a little bit more uh, strong looking so he will be the big strong guy that will for example be only like in a groups of three or something while having like 20 of like lesser demons that i later will also show you uh, in the video because like no, in this video in different video because i also recorded the process for the lesser demons but i wanted to make him look a bit more basic so i was not trying to give him like a lot of crazy armor because like no one will spend money or like the forging power just to give a demon like a really cool armor especially if he is going to die pretty much early on i guess so i guess like a really basic like clothing some really simple metal rings will do just fine and some sort of a club uh, for his hand will do just fine to to fit the overall like feeling of this demon so he is by any means not supposed to be any demon lord or anything not like a higher demon or something it is just a basic brute so that was the pretty much the idea for the guy and in this case i also wanted to like show him with this light from the underneath him because once i read in the book and it's also a pretty obvious information that things that are lit from the bottom uh, look a little bit more evil and look like a little bit more dangerous so also that's the reason why all the horrors and everything especially the old horrors were showing all the monsters like with the light coming from the bottom so it will look a little bit more creepy and same for the legs also i had like a shitload problems of with the quads it's like back then i had no idea how the quads were like attached and everything and what were like the shapes i had the general idea but i was not studying this enough so i had to also take some like bodybuilder shots for the quads so i will see what goes where especially for the knees like the knees even today it's a pain in the ass for me like i hate drawing knees they are not that complicated but as again there are a lot of subtleties but going back to the illustration uh, i also wanted to make it a little bit more like monochromatic so pretty much everything is red and is broken by the like gray grayish blue uh, tones so i guess it will like work nicely and will fit to the idea of the of the demon in hell i i guess it's it's pretty neat idea so also for the equipment as i said nothing fancy so there will be like there will be no like crazy shoulder pads with all the spikes and schools or carved details and everything everything is just a like leather strap to keep his skirt on his on his ass so he will have something to wear and also he will be able to like attach the schools of the fallen warriors he killed to to his belt as some sort of a trophies also the school is a really cool thing and as i can see i have not recorded the part of the painting of the school but okay uh, for the schools uh, the cool thing is it's a really easy way to show the scale for the monster so for example in this case you can see he is clearly bigger than a casual human but not that much bigger oh okay in here you can see the the schools where i took them from uh, there's a program called school sketcher uh, it's from anatomy 360 i guess and it allows you pretty much to like make a school rotate it, rotate it any way you want and light it any way you want and the program is free because only thing you need to to make to get it for free for like five pounds i guess uh, you have to share uh, it on your timeline so you will get like the most amazing tool for the schools for free and you don't have to worry about like setting it in the blender for example like putting all the lights and everything like pretty much all you have to do is just to slide some sliders and then i just copied it and pasted it and painted all over it because i felt it will like give the best the best result and in my opinion it gave the best result results because as you can see the schools look look pretty okay 
in my opinion. And in here I was also reworking some of the lights because I was not really feeling like it was light properly. Like the one thing you need to remember with all the 3D stuff, um, sometimes you need to kind of make something be incorrect in a sense to make it look correct. So like 3D is mathematically, mathematically too perfect and sticking to it like all the way through the whole illustration might slow you down or might like hurt your process so you will not be able to add anything really cool to the illustration if you will try to stick too much to the 3D. So just remember like using 3D is just a stage, it's, it's just a tool to help you, but as all tools it should not dictate the way you work, it should help you work with, with your illustration. So I guess it's a thing that I was also like, that I also was not responsible at fault. What I also did back in the days where I had a 3D like render, I felt like it's too perfect, I, I cannot destroy it. But like while doing this project, I kind of felt like, okay, this is the 3D, it's meant to help me, not to like do the work for me. So in this case, it, it helped a lot. And I see there are some missing parts in the video. I don't remember why, especially for the maze. For the maze, I guess it was something like I just found a cool maze on the web, like in some sort of like reconstruction groups or on the eBay, someone was selling it and I just took a photo, like skewed it a little bit, like edited it a little bit. So it's not like the exact copy. And then I just pasted it and kind of light it up properly to make it look okay. So for all the simple, like really subtle lights and everything, what I was using was to create a new layer, probably with a color dodge layer style, blending mode, not layer style, and just lit some things to add a little bit more greens to it. So the skin will have a little bit more different shades on it. And I also felt like on the stage that the demon needs a bit more spikes, so I added him a bit more spikes, like humans get moles and demon grow spikes. It will be a pretty neat thing. And I also wanted to make his skin look a little bit thicker, so I gave it some like spots all over the place and also gave him some veins, because vein is like veins are like a really cool like for example, fifth level of details or whatever level of details that will kind of bring out the whole like strength of the figure. Mm. No, how to say it? Like veins will allow you to play a little bit more with the composition and will show that something is really strong, strong and that it will probably will be able to crush you. And also like the things that I really liked in this in this demon were the horns because I thought like a lot of demons that I saw online were like really symmetrical and I kind of felt like that's kind of not the, what the demons should be. So I felt like the lesser demon, like we could say the, the dumb demons, they are not meant to be perfect. So I guess adding a little bit more asymmetry to them uh, will be a cool thing and I think it works pretty nicely. And for the finishing touches, as you can see, I took some smoke photos from textures.com, I guess, and just pasted them in here and used some blending modes just to give him a little bit more smoke and everything. And to populate the scene with, scene with a little bit more like sharp details. So this way, when I have like a pretty good or pretty okay base with the painting, I can like increase the quality of the painting by like, I can like double the, the quality just by adding some photo textures. And I really like using photo textures. I think it's a great way to like improve your painting. And after adding some vignette and adding some more colors to the background, I guess it's going pretty close to the finish. And also if you need to make something look cool, just add a lot of clouds and add a lot of like fumes and everything like it's the easiest way to make to look to make look something cool so yeah 
I guess that's all. So I guess maybe you have learned something or maybe I made something a little bit more clear for you or at least I showed you how this illustration came to be. So if you will have any questions, just comment down below and remember to subscribe and like the video, turn this notification type of stuff. I guess I have to say it because YouTube algorithm told me so. So I guess, yeah, that's all. So here is the illustration. In the end, I only added some sparkles. It was also from the textures.com and changed the fire in his face for the yellow one because the client wanted me to do so. So thanks for watching and goodbye.